When the um, MOD um, subjected their first plan, it was agreed by the local council because we must remember that uh, Stornoway has actually been a NATO base since the 60s. Mm. There was work done in the 60s, the um, runways were reinforced and all sorts of work done, but it was never actually used as a NATO base. Um, I think the reason then was supposed to be financial. So that when this new application came through, because it had never been used and there had been no difficulties, I think this is one of the reasons that the council were probably, you know, quite sort of easily passed it. Um, and anyway, it was noticed by members of the Sundwick Community Council that um, this development was to take place. And because there are there's um, a concentration of population all around the airfield. There's lots of quite heavily populated villages. And um, they became a bit alarmed and began to make inquiries. And um, in the end, the, the uh, Western Isles Council um, agreed to withdraw their agreement. Um, and then we had sort of well, lots of um, meetings with MOD personnel. Uh, and finally, a public meeting was um, organized and at that time there was um, a great deal of, of sort of feeling about it among the local population mm. because there had been some very scary stories going around that we might be uh, turned into a, another Keflavik because the um, the American base at um, in Iceland at that time was under threat because of the political situation mm. and it was thought that Stornoway would block that gap in the North Atlantic if NATO lost um, Keflavik. Um, however, we had the public meeting which we won on points but the Secretary of State decreed that because of the national interest that the project should go ahead. Uh, well, once the work actually started on, on the airfield, people, and, and quite naturally, you can understand, felt, well, it's done now, what can we do about it? Mm. And I think this is when the apathy really set in, um, sadly, but I mean, I think this is a feeling that happens with lots of, of people who are <coughs> um, deep down sympathetic, but feel mm. they have no power to do anything. La guerre entre l'Iran et l'Irak atteint les capitales, missiles iraniens sur Bagdad, le roi Hussein de Jordanie et l'égyptien Moubarak sur place pour examiner les besoins de guerre irakiens. Le roi de l'évasion au bord de la mort, Bruno Sulak, avait tenté la nuit dernière de s'enfuir de Fleury-Mérogis. Il est grièvement blessé. L'un des sous-directeurs de la prison a été placé en garde à vue. La neige entrave la circulation de la Lorraine aux Alpes et aux Pyrénées. 19 skieurs évacués par hélicoptère cet après-midi du plateau du Vercors. Madame, Monsieur, bonsoir. こんばんは。in this first section of the Japanese television, there is an average of one primary change of image every 6.4 seconds. The following section from the Iraqi television has a change every one and a quarter seconds. Verschärfung im Krieg am Persischen Golf. Irak hat heute den iranischen Luftraum zur Kriegszone erklärt und alle Fluggesellschaften vor dem Anfliegen iranischer Flughäfen gewarnt. Radio Bagdad meldete, ab Dienstag 18 Uhr laufe jedes Flugzeug über Iran Gefahr, abgeschossen zu werden. Die Ausweitung des Luftkrieges sei die Antwort auf die ständigen iranischen Angriffe gegen irakische Städte. Im Persischen Golf wurden heute mindestens drei weitere Handelsschiffe beschossen. Beim Brand eines liberianischen Supertankers wurden zehn Besatzungsmitglieder verletzt. Av og til så må jeg stenge av, så jeg klarer ikke å ta det helt innover meg, hvor forferdelig det er, noen gang. 
What is worrying me at times is that I receive so many impressions from the television, terrible scenes like the pictures we are looking at today. Sometimes I have to close myself mentally. I'm unable to concentrate enough on various incidents which I'm watching. They tend to be only images, and I worry that I may become callous by watching these things. Have you seen these pictures before? No, pictures of the poverty in Africa, but nothing as strong as this. Of course, we have heard descriptions of the details of an atomic bomb explosion, but it is the first time I am looking at such pictures. It makes a very strong impression on me. And then I become angry, because I am not allowed to show people how scared I am. Then people will say that I have to be realistic. You must be sensible. Actually, though, when looking at such pictures, it is impossible to be cynical. Yet I have a feeling that I am not allowed to express anything in the society I am living in and in my daily surroundings. I don't dare to show how afraid I am. It's looked upon as childishness. It is believed that the underlying reason for the development of the runway at Stornoway is for its use by United States C-141 strategic cargo planes to ferry troops and supplies to Europe as part of the Pentagon's projected plans to be able to fight what is referred to as a limited nuclear war in Europe. These plans would call for the use of massive reinforcements and it is these which would use this runway do the local contractors who supply this equipment know this? Has the British television discussed this with the public? Has the government? Has the Ministry of Defence? Do the people who live here really know what is happening? Has anyone told them? Has anyone asked them? What I'm saying is that they didn't have to hold a public inquiry at all. They don't even have to ask for planning permission, and that's the aggravating aspect of the power of some of the government department, um, and especially in this case, a government department as as pervasive as the MOD, mm. um, so that getting the public inquiry itself was a was a struggle in, in the earlier in the earlier uh, months and years. So that I, I, I definitely don't think that we were we were affording the, the MOD any courtesy whatsoever, mm. and they considered it a courtesy to to <coughs> to allow us a public inquiry a sham as it turned out, as Mavis has said, because mm. there were foregone conclusions. You've yeah. got to remember that we, we couldn't even argue in that public inquiry, we couldn't even argue on, on strategic grounds at all. I mean, all we could do is argue on planning grounds, and even on planning grounds we won the inquiry. I mean, <clears throat> it was quite incredible in the inquiry, every time we tried to bring up anything to do with the strategy involved with the, mm. 
with the uh, establishment of the base, they, you know, they just came down as like a ton of bricks. But they, they kept coming over with the strategic argument all the time, you know, that we need this for the defence of our country and this kind of thing. But it, you know, whenever, whenever we argued the strategic point, it was taken as if you know we had no idea of what we were talking about. We we're just really like naughty little children. Mm. The whole thing was a sham anyway, from start to finish. I mean, it, it was very hard not to, not to feel optimistic because we'd forced something which had never happened before on them. But I think if you really sat back and were objective about it, there was no way that they were ever going to give in to us, you know? Yeah. I think the way they were so very, very quiet, you know, there's sort of, we had the inquiry and the sort of crescendo of feeling and optimism on the island was absolutely amazing. Just everywhere you went, people really had a sort of a, perhaps an unnatural feeling that they had been successful and that, you know, there was no way that the government could sort of turn around and say, well, you know, this just isn't on. But the sort of, the inquiry results were kept quiet and yeah. we heard nothing for so long. And I think it became apparent to a lot of us around this table that they were obviously playing the waiting game, waiting for all yeah. the sort of euphoria to subside and waiting for people to lose that enthusiasm. And they just held us off and held us off and we heard nothing and they kept all very quiet until they eventually decided to say, well, you know, the results of the inquiry are just going to be ignored anyway because it's in the national interest. Как это не парадоксально будет звучать для западного зрителя, mm -hmm. и может быть даже для Питера, mm -hmm. чувство беспомощности ни меня, ни членов моих семей, ни моих знакомых, ни друзей не охватывает. Mm -hmm. И вот почему. It's an interesting question. Что... And my reply Нет, might sound peculiar to a Western spectator or even to Peter. Neither me nor my friends ever experienced a feeling of helplessness. I'll explain why. We believe in the wisdom of our government. For decades, since 1917, we've always come out for peace and cooperation. But we are compelled to take measures in the field of armaments. Let's take an example. Will a thief with a pistol rob a passerby who also has a pistol? He will think twice. Now, thinking in these terms on a state level, we don't feel helpless because we are guarded by our brothers in the armed forces. Some of us have fathers who know what war is like. They know very well that the weaker is beaten. So we are compelled to defend ourselves, though it is to the detriment of our economy and our standard of living. Слабый страдает в первую очередь. Причем защищаться мы вынуждены. Вынуждены защищаться в ущерб своему хозяйству, в ущерб уровню жизни. Мы вынуждены защищаться. A researcher into the cost of Soviet military spending wrote this. Because the military industries in the Soviet Union hold such priority, their first call on resources and manpower cost the rest of the economy immeasurably. When the best goes to the military, everything else suffers.
$352.5 million. So it's a little bit of a change in the world, but it's a little bit of a change in the world, and it's a little bit of a change in the world, and it's a little bit of a change. And you are going to tell me that I cannot say anything about it? That we cannot comment or disagree with decisions taken in the middle of America that have to be enacted here? Well, the collective voice of this island decided that the base would not come here. And that is how we stand today. Yes, that is how it was at the beginning. But the fact that at the next council election, those councillors supportive of the anti-NATO movement were removed, showed how the electorate felt on the issue. I cannot agree with you there, my friend. When the last council election took place, there was no debate about NATO and the new development. I would support strongly what Angus said. I'm not going to sit around and let these monsters... Look at what is in front of you. Is that what you want to happen to us here? What is going to happen to the community then? As long as I can, I will argue and debate this thing which is bringing arms up here. And who knows who is to have control over them? It may be three idiots, and if one of them goes mad, the bomb could drop. And are you going to say to me that I can't say anything about it? That's a poor democracy, then. The national authorities in Norway still give credibility to the concept of public evacuation in certain strategic areas. One such area is Stjordal, where the local civil defense have plans to evacuate people away from Vernes airport to outlying areas. Working with local citizens, we here enact what could happen in the event of a perceived nuclear attack. What on earth are you doing here now? Haven't you listened to the wireless? Yes, and we've heard the alarm, but we have decided to remain here together. There's no question of that. Pack and come along. No, I have cattle and the harvest is not yet done. Several years ago, the local population here was given a small civil defense brochure briefly summarizing the plans for evacuation. The plans are sketchy and vague, but appear to suggest that one of the evacuation areas would be a nearby peninsula called do you realize where Frost is situated? The alternative evacuation areas are Marokka to the east, near the Swedish border, and Lavanger to the north. It is believed that nearby Frosta is the most likely place that would be chosen, but no one really knows. The Viken family would have two choices, either to resist the authorities and stay in their home, or leave. The civil defense brochure concludes by demanding that its instructions to evacuate be followed with loyalty. 
These two subjects, I think, are connected. The subject of questioning and the subject of defense. There's no country, no place, there's nothing you have to defend if we would consider it. But it's with our homes and families where it begins. Your neighbor can look after himself, but you have your home and family to defend, whoever you are. When we began work on this film three years ago, the expenditure on the world arms race was $650 billion a year. This figure has since risen to a conservative estimate of $800 billion a year. We're using the faces of uh, two faces here, the face of a 21-year-old soldier from Hiroshima as a reference point, because much of this money is being spent on nuclear weapons, and the face of an African child. The 21-year-old soldier from Hiroshima, um, he survived until uh, August the 18th, and then he started to feel sick. His hair fell out on August the 29th. There was purple uh, bleeding beneath the skin. It's called uh, hypodermal bleeding. And the young man died on the 3rd of September. He's a young soldier. There are now 25 million soldiers in the world. There are further 50 million people employed on arms industries in one way or another. I'd like to come back on that, Peter. How many soldiers did you say there were in the world? There are 25 million soldiers in uniform. God. And a further 50 million people, I imagine many of them, most of them probably civilians, <coughs> 50 million uh, employed on arms industries in one way or another. Mind boggles when you think about it, the, the money that's spent in arms. There's just poverty and suffering in the world. It's incredible that we can let this continue. Do they talk about this at your school, Susan, very much? Um, not so much in secondary. They used to talk about it in primary more, in fact, than they do now. At school, we have received no information about it. But what about this boy? Have you seen him before? Yes, I've seen him. What's the matter with him? He is one of the poor, the starving. Because we spend so much on arms. We don't need all those weapons. Three hundred and eighty-four million dollars. The journey. 
Du ringer inte Vi får höra när vi känner på kvistlamaket. Tror du han har fått lov att hjälpa mig att pröva sprängningen? Närmare sitt eget land? Tror du franskmän har... Do you think the French people would have allowed nuclear tests near their own borders? No, I think they would have protested. Part of the problem is that it is so far away from us. Also, we adults do not know much about what is going on. Christian, you probably keep yourself better informed. Well, yes, I grew up with papers as daily reading material from the time I could read. The information I've received about this particular matter, I've acquired from a newspaper, a national paper, in the form of a small notice over one column. It has always been just a small notice i en spalte i dagspressen. Now let's just have a look at some of the American bombs. As I want to ask you if you've ever seen photographs or ever heard people talk about these things before. Karu is the family dog they have to leave behind. Uh, this is a B-43 bomb. Its uh, explosive power is about one million tons of high explosive. There are about 2,000 of these. Some of these weapons are going to be retired for other weapons, but these are the weapons which exist at the moment. 2,000 of these weapons, 1 million tons of high explosive. This is the B-53. This has 9 million tons of high explosive. They send the food once a month, and each class buys in turns. What about money? We don't have money. Does that mean that even if the food is available, those who have no cash go without? Yes. This rather strange looking bomb from a parachute. This is a more modern bomb. This is the B-61 nuclear bomb. This is for a variety of aircraft, including F-16s. It's uh, 100 to 500 kilotons. So although it's less powerful than the others, it's still many times Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There are 3,000 of these. The neighboring Scandinavian country of Sweden, which is officially neutral, is not supposed to export arms at all. Yet Sweden exports approximately 40% of her arms to the Third World and at least 13 countries to which Sweden exports arms do not fulfill Sweden's own conditions not to use the weapons in a state of war or not to suppress their own people. So, have any of you ever heard about these weapons before? 
You know, I've seen and heard about the tomahawk and the first one that you showed me. I think I've seen that before, but the other varieties, no, I, I, you know, I was not a, I mean, I haven't, I'm not that informed that I know any of those weapons by name or, or by megatons of TNT or anything. Had you, had, you, had you ever seen pictures of these things before, Trish? Um, just the first one and the last one, I've seen pictures of them before, and the other ones I haven't, no. Have you ever seen these before, Ron? Um, I've, I've never seen a, uh, the bombs themselves. Um, Have you seen these photographs before? No, I've never seen these photographs before. I've heard of the, um, <clears throat> I've heard of the Titan missile and the cruise missile and the uh, Tomahawk, but I, I've never seen these photographs. It's the first time I've ever seen this. Ellen, what about you? Have you seen these before no, at all? No, I've never seen them before either. Well, I've heard, you know, statistics that I've listened to on TV and, uh, and just have an idea, but I had no idea that there were so many and that it was, they were so uh, strong, you know. The photograph on the bottom right shows a box containing all that was found of Toshiko Saiki's mother. Which is your younger sister in this photograph? Here she is. On August 6, she was at the hospital. Then she escaped to this elder sister's place. She was bleeding from all over her body, and her hair fell out. あの、苦しみながら骨と身が外れるね、ちゃんと預けてくれ言いながら亡くなっていったんです。お家にずっとおられたんですか。え、一緒に病院行っても治療なんかありゃしませんよね。何にもしてやれないんだから。お医者連れ
That is the opportunity afforded by your visit. To show the world that this unique and remarkable partnership is capable of supporting the most formidable tasks of our era, sustained economic growth, thoughtful environmental protection, and genuine mutual security. Mr. President, it can only be the luck of the Irish that brings us together on this auspicious day, which I use to salute you as a true and a valued friend of Canada and as a leader of a great democracy, the United States of America. The Soviet defense sector uses one-sixth of all the country's chemical and energy supplies. One-third of the output of the metalworking and machine tooling industry. And it is estimated that 60% of all Soviet enterprises are involved in some way with defense production. As we have uh, recently discussed, the uh, Honeywell organization has constructed uh, missile guidance parts for the Poseidon C-3 missile, navigation and radar equipment for the B-52 nuclear bomber, built components for the Tomahawk cruise missile, for the air-launched cruise missile, and so on. Now, Ron, would you uh, tell us about um, the the manner of your involvement with Honeywell. I think you actually worked for a company which was absorbed in Honeywell, isn't that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, the company that I work for is um, in the protection services area. And uh, what we do is uh, we install and monitor fire alarms and burglar alarm systems in residences and businesses. Also, um, supervisory type of alarms, um, temperature sensing devices and so on, and access control uh, for large buildings. And um, that's basically what we do here in Portland. I mean, that's, that's our entire function. And um, the job I do is uh, I inspect the uh, fire alarm systems in buildings. In uh, it's um, mostly uh, commercial buildings, mm. and uh, I go to the building and test the fire alarm, make sure everything works fine, and and uh, that's basically what I do. This is a photograph of Howard Moreland displaying a model that he built. It's a life-size model of a hydrogen bomb warhead. He's the first person to make publicly visible the inner workings of a hydrogen bomb. Here's the atomic bomb trigger. It's the same power as the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. And it initiates the hydrogen bomb explosion down here. The whole thing is no bigger than one of those rounded waste baskets you sometimes see in bus stations or schools. These soldiers are I photographed in East Berlin. They're the soldiers who stand guard over the monument to the victims of militarism. This is a photograph from 
South Dakota. This is a crew of strategic bombers. They fly the B-52s that are loaded with nuclear weapons. They can get from their alert facility to the airplane and have the airplane airborne within 60 seconds. The United States has been on full-scale, 24-hour military alert since the early 1960s. This man is a fission explosives expert at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California. He got into nuclear weapons design with a long-term plan of getting into, eventually, arms control. Four hundred and eight million dollars. So, this, 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 this is how they confirmed it was her head. On the other hand, my husband's parents were missing for a long time. It was not for 25 years that their bodies were found separately. But as for my mother, only the head was found. The rest of her body could be in this big box. Now, I know it's really almost uh, completely out of court for me to say how aware of this are you, because this is on your doorstep every day, this situation. How much do you think white people in this country are really aware of these kind of human statistics? I, <clears throat> I really don't think there were. Do you, Liz? No. <clears throat> no, I don't. Not at all. Uh, I'm not even aware of that to that. Had you, uh, Elizabeth, had you heard about these uh, maternal death figures before in this country? No. Uh, it's not surprising at all. Um, the unemployment uh, situation in the black community, and the cutback in uh, the federal programs. Um, uh, for example, I am a, a board member of uh, Utica Community Action. And at a particular time when unemployment is extremely high in the, uh, the black community, Community Action, an anti-poverty agency, has been operating on the same budget level for three years. Mm. Tanya, in your school, how much, how much have you in your class discussed these kind of figures? How much have the teachers talked with you about these things? 
in school? We don't talk about it often. You talk about it sometimes? Yes. What do the teachers say about it? They say that you should cut down on some of that Re President Reagan should cut down on some of his other programs and then won't be so much unemployment and stuff like that. Do they say which programs uh, he should cut down on? No.